welcome to another episode of The Positive Side on RVN TV. My name is Ann DeSantis and I'm your host. It's great to be here and I have a topic that's a concern for all of us. We're here located in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, not that far from Philadelphia. We're only a half hour away uh, and we're going to talk about a film that my friends here, John Raschuti and Jill Frenchy, created called Kensington in Crisis. So I want to welcome you, John. Welcome you, Jill. Thank you so much for being a guest. Thanks and for having us. Thank you. They are co-producers of, as I said, the, the documentary film called Kensington in Crisis. So keep an eye out for that, for that film. So I thought we could just start out with, um, you know, you two have both been involved in the film industry for some time. Just take us on a journey of, you know, where you've been before you created uh, Kensington in Crisis. Well, in my previous life, I worked for SEPTA. And when I retired from SEPTA, uh, I got into uh, public access television. I was invited to do a show uh, titled uh, uh, Radnor Round Table. Uh, we live in Radnor Township. Jill, Jill Freshy lives in uh, Gladway in Lower Murrian. And um, I started to talk about public transportation. I thought, what's to talk about this stuff? I want to do something really much more interesting. So I had the idea with the, the general manager that was uh, at the television station at the time, and we said, let's do a documentary about SEPTA's control center, 1234 Market Street, and I won't say the floor number that's on, that's private. And uh, we filmed this wonderful documentary, and we had a, a really good film editor. It was only 40 minutes long. It's currently on YouTube. And uh, we won an Emmy for it and two Telly Awards. The, f the Emmy was for film editing. Uh, along the way, George retired. Uh, Jill, uh, George recommended, he was the general manager, George Strimmel, recommended Jill Freshy as, uh, as a person who could f do a lot of the technical, very artistic, very, very talented woman. He recommended Jill, and I said, okay, well, I, well, I brought her in because I'm, I, I'm a novice. And, and Jill, with her relationship with mainline television, had uh, expertise in, in television. She knew how uh, the, the, the rules, uh, and she knew how to keep me in line with the rules because I, there was nothing for me to blur the lines. And Jill would always keep me along the, the way. And of course, she's a wonderful talent. She, she started generating content, and she said, uh, well, let's, and let's do this and let's do that. And that led ultimately up to eventually uh, Kensington in crisis. Wow. Yeah. And what about yourself, Jill? I, I know that you've been in the business for quite some time and so talented. Thank you. Um, well, I started out as a school teacher mm -hmm. and started taking classes uh, to learn how to be a film editor. Just as a hobby and then it grew into a business and then I met George and John and and then I started to tackle more important issues for the community. It started out as an art and culture show so I would film the art museum or cultural events, tap dancing, dancing, you know all the pretty things in life and then when we got to Kensington it became well this is a serious issue let's take it on and let's try to help these people. So. Well, I congratulate you both because uh, I'll just tell my viewers that uh, a couple nights ago I went to see uh, the, the film at, at Radnor Township uh, facility there and it was just uh, really life-changing. So um, thank you for, for what you did. And so let's move ahead to the present. How did Kensington in Crisis come about that you uh, created this film? Well, Jill was contracted by a, a group called Rock Ministries, and they're on Kensington Avenue, close to Lehigh Avenue. And what they do is they're a, a, a nonprofit, I think, but they voluntarily provide meals for the children of people who are su suffering from uh, substance abuse. And uh, Jill went up there. She said, you want to come up where with me one night and, and take a look at this? And we, we did. Well, it's one thing we didn't go directly there. You to get to it, we had to go through some of the side streets, and it was startling, and and uh, and it it had not reached a third world country level. 
And I thought, this is America, this is Philadelphia, and this, this is really sad. And we have to bring this to people's attention. And our to total motivation, and you didn't ask me this question, was we voluntarily spent a year on the streets of Kensington. I mean, I know Kensington like I know Radnor. I can name streets. And uh, we spent a year voluntarily walking those streets at all hours. If you, when you see the film, you see a lot of it was filmed at night. And we, we film situations to bring attention to this terrible crisis because it affects our youth. It's affecting our children. And that's what we wanted to inform, educate, and to save a life. To save one life at a time if we, if we had to. And it, just, it was all Jill's idea. It, you know, she said, John, you want to go along? And I said, okay. And it was, but Jill was the, was the, the impetus and the, and the genius behind the whole project. Thank you both, honestly. And as I said just a minute or two ago, that I did watch the film. Uh, my husband and I went to see it in Radnor, PA, and uh, we were both just uh, li leaving there feeling like, as you said, use the word third world country. We're at that level. I mean, it's, it's at that level right now there, the, the, the crisis that's happening. And we need to make an awareness to, to people uh, that Philadelphia has become one of the capitals of the United States for the drug problem, right? I mean, right. I know that that was part of, uh, part of what was brought out. Maybe you can expand on that. Well, there, there's so many layers to it. It's, it's how we got to be, uh, have that awful reputation. And, and the police, there's not enough police to do anything with it. It's getting the people into rehab. There's the homeless factor. There's the, uh, uh, the, the mental illness factor. And, and it's like as one of the, one of the uh, persons that we interviewed in the film says, nobody wakes up and says, I want to be a drug addict. They're there. So a traumatic experience. Some of them are veterans. You heard the one lawyer that was interviewed. Uh, suffered a, a, a shoulder injury while he was in college and he was a wrestler. Well, if you just connect the dots, he doesn't say it, but if you connect the dots, you're thinking to yourself, hey, this kid's going to lose his scholarship uh, unless he starts doing something to, to help himself. So he, he was using uh, opiates and then he went to law school, the same thing, and now he's, he's helping other professionals to, and, and, and Jill and I, of course, met him, he's helping other professionals to, to, to get rehabilitated, to go into recovery. And the other thing that's it's, it's incredible for me is it's a lifelong struggle for those, pe for those yeah. poor people. It, it's a lifelong, it's not like, wow, today I'm gonna eat tasty cakes. No, you're not. You can't do anything, uh, you know? It's, it's endless. And I grew up in a family uh, that had someone that was mentally ill who took his own life. His name was Jewel Stockler. And nobody talked about him. I didn't even know I had an uncle until I was well into my teens. And when I see people walking the streets of Kensington, I think about their families, the shame, the embarrassment, and it's not anybody's fault. You know, these, it's a disease. It needs to be fixed. It, and these people need help. They need resources. They need homes. Some of them aren't employable. So what do we do as a society to take care of our mentally ill, for our struggling? We have good health care, but yet people are struggling to get into rehab centers because insurance won't pay for it. They won't pay for it long enough. One person we interviewed said he had a five-day window. Well, that's not enough. It takes, and then the professionals will tell you that it takes a good year of rehab to really give the person enough of a start to really change their life. So we need to look at more long-term care and long-term housing for these people. Well, you did a really wonderful thing by even coming together with this idea, getting it out there that it's, you know, as you said, it still has to be a little bit edited. Mm -hmm. And then tell us what will happen with the film once that's all finished. You'll put it, I know you said something about YouTube. Where can people that are watching, they want to see this film, where can they watch it? Well, we're, we want to keep it, um, right now we want to keep it in an educational format so that we don't just want to put it on YouTube because okay. 
we want to be able to support people in watching it and then talk about it mm -hmm. and really educate and change the way people think. Um, eventually, we'd like to get a wider distribution, um, but it really requires, first of all, that you'd be over 18, we feel. Oh, it, yes. It, it's very um, graphic, and so we'll see. You know. Yeah, I left the I leave the business decisions to Jill. She's the brains <laughs> behind the operation. The the one of the things that was important and Jill touched on it was the panelist. One of the panelists references stigma. And after the film was over, a, a, a young lady came up to me and she told me about uh, the day that her husband OD'd and died of fentanyl and heroin, and her husband was a financier. And he not, when I say financier, she told me he was in Zurich and Moscow, New Delhi, Berlin, Munich. So this was a financier. And when he died, his mother said, I don't want you to say that he died of, of, of a drug overdose. Say that he died of alcohol. And she said, well, my husband hardly drank. How am I going to say it was alcohol? And that's the stigma that, you see, once we acknowledge the fact that we have a problem and it's drugs and it's not w w something else you'll start to make the change to that and that's what jill and i were hoping to bring forward you heard a a, a young lady in there saying that she was a, a professor she was you didn't see her her face and she said her children she has a 23 year old daughter her daughter's never seen her high she says that in the interview well when she came out of rehab her mother said, don't tell my friends it was drugs. It was tell them some it was alcohol. And see, so we have to change that stigma. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much. Now, unfortunately, we do have to take a short break. Sure. So we have a lot more to talk about, as you can see. So join us in a couple minutes on the positive side on RVN TV. Shelter dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life. If they were human, we would call them wise. They would be the ones with tales to tell and stories to write. The ones dealt a bad hand who responded with courage. Do not pity a shelter dog. Adopt one. Say we've got grit and we'll take it as a compliment because it's our uncommon drive our spark within that brings us together and sets us apart. We are temple made. And when others take shortcuts, when others take breaks, when others take the easy way, we take charge. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind the scenes footage, previews, and more. I work 13 hours a day, six days a week. So when I'm off the clock, I gotta get stuff done. So when I need a snack, I need something healthy, tasty, and easy to eat. Like wonderful pistachios without the shells. They're protein powered, delicious, and great on the go. And that's perfect for me. Thanks, Liz. A woman without a lot of time. Hi, welcome back again to The Positive Side on RVN TV. I'm Ann DeSantis here with my wonderful guests, John Raschuti and Jill Freshy. So I, I'm very grateful for them because they produced a movie, a new documentary film called Kensington in Crisis. And it's all about the opioid epidemic in Philadelphia. And during the first half, they were just talking to us about how bad the problem is. So. Um, as I'm looking at you, my viewers, just asking you to uh, go on to their website and check out MainlineTV.org. I hope that's correct, right? Yeah. And you can learn more about Kensington in Crisis and, and this terrific documentary that they did that I happen to see. I'm so very grateful. Got to see it uh, this past week. So um, I wondered if we could pick up Jill with 
how someone can help not only the people who are out there, what can they do to help to make this problem get better? Right. And then also we want to talk about the film too, so. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, somebody in the audience naively asked, you know, should we just drive down there and, you know, would that help or go on the streets? I don't think that's the answer. Um, it is, it isn't safe to just get out of your car and walk around. Most of our filming we did, um, John was driving and I was in the car. Um, so, but I think that places like Prevention Point, the Rock Ministries, um, the churches, anywhere, any organization in Kensington, located in Kensington, is really trying to help and doing a great job at, at helping. They're getting people into services, in getting people jobs, getting people cleaned up. So just um, donate money or donate your time. Prevention Point is probably the, the largest uh, positive organization that you can volunteer at. Now, do you happen to know their website, or I guess if they Google Prevention Point, right? Yeah. So just remember that if you live Cherry Hill, South Jersey, or Philadelphia, Prevention Point is a way that you might be able to help out in this terrible, terrible crisis. Because it affects, as you said, everyone. You mentioned the young, but I think it really it seems like it's affecting a lot of age groups, well, the people that you see. One of the, one of the reasons that it was that, that Radnor Township immediately contacted us when they knew about the film was because it's, as you see in the film, these aren't kids from Kensington, or Kenzos as they call themselves. These are your kids. And when I say your kids, it's Cherry Hill, it's, it's the Lower Marion, it's Radnor, it's Westchester, it's Bucks County, it's uh, anywhere you can think of. And that's what people need to be aware of. And, and it, the people think that, that, well, it's just Philadelphia. No, it's not just Philadelphia. Kids, local kids go to Kensington to buy the drugs. Because you can get a drugs for $5. While we were filming, a girl asked me for 13 cents. And I said, well, what do you need 13 cents for? I knew. Mm -hmm. We had enough experience on the street. So, people knew us on the street because we were there so often. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, then I'll have $5. Well, for five dollars, you can get high for eight hours. You can shoot heroin. It's a young girl, and we would ask two questions. If a, when we would talk to somebody, we would ask them, "Where are you from, and do you want to go to rehab?" Oh well, I, I don't want to go to rehab now. I got to go clean my house. I got to get something out of my car. Anything to a, a reason not to go. Mm. It's a very, 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 in my mind, tragic. And, pers and speaking on a personal level, I struggled with that a lot because Kensington changed the way I think. I used to think, well, they made a choice. They, it's their choice. Mm. They got there. They may have been veterans. They're, they're, I met a nurse that was on the street. She was a, a, a nurse in Afghanistan and got injured. So it's, it, it's very, 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 very powerful. I'm very, very pleased with the work that Jill and I did. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly pleased that Jill gave me the opportunity to work with her on this project. Um, she, uh, I, it was, like I said, it was her idea, and, and for her to give me that chance to, she's opened a lot of people's eyes with this project. So, I mean, SEPTA was fun for me to make. You know, Compared, it was a fun. Yes. Sure. I think one of the things that, when you go to Kensington and you see the problem or you see the film, you, the first question within five minutes as you're watching the street scenes is, how did this happen? And that's kind of where we took it. You know, how did this happen? Why did it happen? Why aren't the police doing more? And you realize that they are doing a lot and that it's such, the drugs have such a stronghold on your brain, they reprogram your brain to believe that the only thing that can give you pleasure is the drug. So if you wake up every day and your, your mind, the tsunami of, of messages telling you, do the drug, do the drug, do the drug, it's very, very, very hard not to do the drugs. So um, it takes a very, very strong-minded person and a lot of support but people can get better, and people can change, and that's where we end it. You know, you, we can all work together. Don't give up. Keep loving your person. Don't ever give up on them. 
they can change. Sometimes people go to rehab 40 times mm, before goodness. it makes a difference. So if relapse isn't a failure. Relapse is a closer to getting better. One rehab, two rehabs, I think the average is eight. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. I was so moved by the project that I actually have Kensington's zip code tattooed on my arm. Do one you? Nine, one nine one three four. It's tattooed on my arm. Because it made such an impact it, it on made your such whole an impact. life. Yes. And, and even like you said, your, your change in thinking. Because some people look at, say, someone who's like, what well, we would say less fortunate, but, you know, someone also who's made bad decisions. And yeah. you, you said that it's just so strong that, that that attraction to continue to do something that's so bad for yourself mm -hmm. and your future. So, uh, once again, I just thank you both sincerely that you did this. Viewers, you have to watch Kensington in Crisis again. Keep an eye, as they said, that they're going to try to bring that film out to the general public, maybe not on, say, like a YouTube or anything right away, but that trying to bring it to your communities. Uh, if you're from the greater Philadelphia area or South Jersey, it's affecting you. It's affecting you and your whole community. So, and even if you're not from the Philadelphia area, um, Philadelphia is one of the biggest uh, capitals for drugs, right? I mean, in the United States right now. It's the place to go to buy it. That's right. That's right. And Dr. Oz said it was the cheapest and purest heroin. Mm. So we want to get away from that stigma and we want to be a, a city of hope and a city of recovery. Recovery. Yes. That's right. And living a life that that's guided on a, a better path toward health, wellness, you know, faith, every, all of the good things of life. So yeah. now if somebody's watching and you're thinking, you know what, maybe you want to help out with this film. You want to help to do some funding for them because it does cost money to produce these kinds of productions. So um, I would say, you know, go to MainlineTV.org. Now, is there a Contact Us link there? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So you want to get in touch with John Raschuti, Jill Freshy, And I wondered if you had any final thoughts. There might be somebody watching who their uh, husband, wife, daughter, son, mother, whoever, best friend, has a problem with this. Um, what advice can you give for them to help to get on a better path? Well, I think that people need to be honest about um, what they're dealing with. Uh, they don't need to hide it. It's not something to be ashamed of. Um, we're all in this together. And if we can take it on as a community of help, I think, you know, you're, you're not alone. And that's, what, that's the most important thing to know. There are a lot of resources, rehab centers, all kinds of treatment centers. You know, just don't give up on people. Um, they can get better. We've seen thousands, have met thousands of people and heard stories of recovery. So, yeah, that's the biggest, that's the biggest message. Yeah, that's yeah. good to hear. How about you, John? It has to come from within. When you, as, as one of the people in the, and one of the physicians that's in the a film says, when you're ready to stop, you stop. When you're, when you when it's so bad, you stop. And it, but it's a lifelong battle, and I've thought that to me is the most difficult thing, because you can be clean for 10 years and then relapse. So it's a lifelong struggle. It's not like oh, I'm going to go on a diet. That's a lot simpler. Yeah, it's much much different. It's much it's a, much it's more. It's a heavy common. duty addiction. Yes. Is what it and is. I, I just wanted to add that we um, we wanted to make the film entertaining as well as educational, and we have um, original music from. LA from Gigi Nadine uh, Film Group, and we feel the music really drives the whole message. So we're very excited and thankful to um, Trudy Handelman and Dave Yusekian who gave us the music to use free of charge, and it was just such a blessing. It just completely it was filmed by people in rehab, so they knew the issues, and it just really melded with the story nicely. Yes, it sure did. It sure yeah. did. So viewers, again, I mean, I've seen the film. I know it's good. I'm asking you to keep an eye on Kensington in crisis. Jill, thank you so thank much you. for joining me on The Positive Side. And John, thank you. thank you for having us. Come back again. Thank you for giving us so the opportunity. Wish you all the best. Thank you. We'll see you next.